Alright, in this video I wanted to show you another really simple circuit if you wanted to have a temperature indicator or possibly also, like in this circuit I drew, to show you how to turn a fan, a cooling fan, on and off. So let's start with this one first. Alright, using one of these, this is a thermal switch, thermal cutoff. They use them in NICAD battery packs, nickel metal hydride battery packs, and they use similar ones to this for motors. If they get too hot, they'll shut off so they can cool before they go back on. And how these thermal switches or thermal cutoffs are made, inside of them is a strip of metal. Now the strip of metal is made up of two dissimilar metals that are bonded together. As heat is applied to that bimetallic strip, each metal will expand and contract differently based on temperature. Now these bimetallic strips have a slight curve already in the opposite direction of which the switch will trigger. What causes the switch to trigger is when heat is applied to the bimetallic strip, each metal will react differently to expansion and contraction based on temperature. So as heat is applied to the strip, one side will expand more than the other, causing the bimetallic strip to bow in the opposite direction, which in turn causes the switch to trigger, activating contacts or deactivating contacts, depending on if you're using a normally open or normally closed contacts in your thermal switch. Now you could take advantage of this for a super simple uh, temperature indicator. You could use this on an engine. If you want to see if something gets too hot, it'll light up. Or you can use it as just a simple temperature indicator. There's a lot of different uh, uses for this, but how you could do it, you take 12 volts coming in through a 10K resistor and you'll feed it into the base of an MPN. All right? And at the top part, you're going to take plus 12 volts. You're going to feed it into a colored LED and into a 1K resistor. And this bottom just goes straight to ground. Now the thermal switch is right there. How this works, you have 12 volts feeding in, flowing through the resistor towards the base. When the thermal switch has not been tripped, what's going to happen any voltage that comes in is going to go straight to ground. So you're not going to have any voltage building at the base of this transistor to allow the transistor to let the current flow through it from the collector to the emitter. Now once this reaches a certain temperature where it opens, now you're going to have 12 volts and the voltage is going to increase. It won't be robbed anymore by this shunting to ground like this. What it's going to do is you're going to have that voltage allowing the transistor to turn on, letting the cu uh, current flow through, which is going to light up that LED. So as soon as this thermal switch reaches the point that it's designed to trip at, voltage will climb at the base of the transistor, allowing the collector and emitter to let the current flow through, and that will illuminate the LED. When it's cool, the thermal switch, the voltage that comes in is shunted right to ground. So there's no voltage building up to turn the transistor on. Now, say you want to have a cooling fan come on and off with temperature. You could take one of these, and you can clip it right onto a heat sink of a MOSFET or a TRIAC, as long as the MOSFET and TRIAC is insulated, because some of the tabs where the hole is for the heat sink are live, so you want to make sure you find one that's insulated. So you clamp this onto the heat sink, and when it senses the temperature get to a really hot level where you'd like a fan to come on, you could use a circuit like this. 12 volts, 10K, into the base of an NPN. Now right here is your thermal switch. So like before, when it's open, voltage will climb at this point at the base, turning the transistor on. When it's closed, the voltage is shunted to ground. So now when the voltage, when this is open, when it's triggered, the voltage will climb here, letting this turn on, and when it does, you want to put a high value resistor here, because when this connects, you want to have a lot of the voltage held back, so you want to have this side show up with voltage. So if, say there's 12, you're going to have the 12 come over here, while very, very little is bleeding to ground at this side. 
So you got 12 here going through a diode, and the purpose of the diode is to prevent voltage on this side of the circuit draining back that way. So you have the voltage here going through the diode, charging up a 1,000 microfarad capacitor or even higher, depending on how long you want the fan to run. And it's going to flow through a 10K into the base of an NPN. And what this is going to do, once this circuit triggers, even if it's for a split second, it's going to charge that capacitor up and the fan won't go right off. The fan will run for maybe 30 seconds or a minute or longer, depending on the value of this capacitor and the value of this resistor. So if you can make this a little higher, keep the transistor on, you can get more runtime out of this fan. Now with this particular circuit, the fan will come right on quick towards the end where this is getting ready to lose voltage here to shut the transistor off. It might fade the fan out a little bit before it clicks off. If you don't like that, that's not a problem. You would take the fan out of this position, you'd move it over to here, and you'd put a 12 volt relay coil right here with a back EMF diode on the coil contacts, and then you would take the 12 volt rail and feed it into the common terminal of the relay, then take the normally open contact of the relay and connect that to the fan positive. The fan negative then goes to ground. And when this goes off, it would be go off full power. If you enjoyed watching this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you for watching.